my name is Chris Kurzik from Athabasca Engineering Solutions and, and uh, about us, what do we do? Well, we provide equipment re-rating and, and fitness for service uh, services. We look at reliability and safety studies and we do third party compliance audits to make sure that uh, uh, your en the engineering group is following the uh, local authorities. We do training and certification and uh, we do materials and welding studies and investigations and uh, we do we do some estimating and economic evaluation based upon uh, particularly mechanical static equipment issues and uh, we've done recently some carbon footprint and emission studies. So let's continue on with our videos. In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about ASME B313 as it ha deals with fatigue and cracking and how that ASME code has steps and rules to, to prevent um, you know, fatigue and, and cracking from occurring. And um, the particular um, videos will be based upon 2018 version of B313, but we'll go back in cases uh, to earlier versions so we can kind of look at how the codes changed in the last while and also go forward and I'll talk a little bit about uh, 2020 version, especially with Appendix D, the stress intensities. So let's let's uh, let's jump into it. So the the this areas we're going to cover is chapter one, scope and definitions, chapter two, design and, and cycle life of joints, and chapter three, materials, and uh, five is fabrication, assembly and erection, what's, what's said about that, inspection and examination and testing, number six, and nine, high pressure piping, there's special rules for for um, cyclic um, service and a little bit about uh, appendix D stress intensity appendix F guidance and precautionary notes and uh, W which is very specific rules for high cycle fatigue which is very interesting and uh, we'll wrap it up with appendix X and expansion joints and this part here is what we're going to deal with in this set of videos. So we've got chapter two design, 300.2 definition, severe cyclic conditions. In 2016, there was a big change in the what was defined as severe cyclic conditions. And the essential elements are the, you know, piping components or joints, you know, must resist fatigue. And, you know, if there are cyclic conditions and the, it, this, the idea or, or the, uh, whether something is considered severe cyclical was changed to uh, as determined by the owner or the designer who, you know, understands the process and the conditions better. And uh, it's based upon experience. We're going to get into, you know, what it was prior to 2016 in the next slide. We'll take a look a little bit closer at the pre-2016 standards, because in this standard, they they basically said, well, if you if you have a certain level of stress and you're exceeding a certain number of cycles, then by, by definition, you you're could be uh, considered to be severe cyclic conditions. It does, however, give, you, uh, give the designer um, some latitude on you know, what would produce that equivalent effect. So let, let's take a look at this a little bit, bit deeper here. So cyclic conditions. So we have specific piping components or joints where the stress computed to 319.44 exceeds 0.8 of the allowable as defined in 30235. 
So again, you can see how all the stresses have to be a certain level. And that kind of makes sense because you know, if we looked at the earlier uh, curves where we have steel and we needed to have a certain level of stress in the part, uh, like a cyclic loading of stress uh, in order to you know, progress fatigue. And so um, they also said, well, you know, the, uh, you have to have a certain number of cycles as well. And, and they were saying it's over 7,000, but there was, you know, again, there was, there was exceptions. And so they had a, uh, they decided later on to, to really, you know, go back to giving more onus on the designer. But they did also at that time say that, you know, if there's other conditions that the designer determines, um, will produce the equivalent effect of this kind of thing, then it's up to them as well. So they just simplified it all, which I think is really good. In chapter two design, we see a number of things. We see 30110, uh, they saying, go see appendix, appendix F for guidance. And uh, we'll get to Appendix X a little bit later in this presentation. And later on in, in 30224, they get into allowances for pressure and temperature variation. So one of the more important thing is if you have, um, you know, this, this severe cyclic service, they, the gray iron and non-ductile metals are not permitted. A lot of industry specs, you know, will will say that, and and that's this is basically the driver why you're seeing a lot of client specs forbidding, you know, uh, gray iron. It's it's driven by uh, concerns about you know pressure and fatigue of uh, variations. Also, they're also saying that the circumferential pressure stresses must be less than the, the yield stress at temperature at minimum wall thickness, less less allowances. So, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, the, the software that's used for an analysis um, uh, can be, you know, is, is set up for that. Um, I'm not sure by default, but it, it does come into the calculations. And it, if you have a severe uh, cyclic loading study being done, this. So, more about 3024 allowances for pressure and temperature variations. So there's a part C and they talk about certain conditions for combined stress. And, and so you need to go and take a look at 30236, uh, which will be discussed a little bit later. And then they talk about operating pressure temperature variation. So that's the coincidental pressure and temperature is greater than the design life, which should be um, the variations of less than a thousand hours lifetime. And then there, there's discussions about, you know, if it, can, it cannot exceed the, the pressures, variations can't exceed the, the, um, the, 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 the hydro test pressure or, or the pneumatic test pressure. Buried within 30224 are allowances for pressure and temperature variations. This is particularly found uh, with, you know, rupture disc or, or, or pressure relief valves. And uh, it's referred to as occasional variations in part F1. And it's where you exceed the, the coincidental pressure and uh, allowable stress at temperature. And so um, there be basically these rules have been around a long time, as, as long as I can remember. And basically they say, oh, it, you're okay if you're up to 33% of exceeding the, the, uh, the allowable stress and pressure and stuff. If you're operating uh, less than equal or less than 10 hours at a time, and an accumulative can only occur for like a hundred hours per year. They have a second condition where if you exceed, you can go up to 20% over, but then you get a little bit more, you get more room, you get five times as much room, but you can go operate 50 hours at a time, up to 500 hours per year. And one thing that uh, you should know also, it requires over, owner's approval required. And and also um, a lot of owners, they don't really would rather avoid this because they have to document that because the local authority will require 
documentation of this and and um, it's you know administration administrative intensive because they have to find ways to monitor that process and go back and do all this so but it, it's available and it's been available for a long time so you know be advised that we have to consult the owner and the um, and and the local authority So as we continue our literature search about you know, fatigue and cracking and cyclics, uh, we go to 302.4 and it gets into about temperature and pressure variations. And there's a section H, it says variations below the minimum appendix A temperature is not permitted. So they, there's concerns about you know, the brittle transition temperature. And there's more details found in 323.2.2. Also valves, um, there the onus is on the manufacturer for uh, you know pressure va variations, and it's still the the owner responsibility. 30235B is very similar to what we saw in the ASME B311. And so they talk about an allowable stress range you're supposed to um, you know, stay within. And so 1A and 1B are, are is basically the relationships that you should be using. So we'll, let's get into that. So let's take a look at this equation, these relationships a little bit more detail. So SC is the basic allowable stress as shown here. And it, and it is at the minimum temperature expected during the displacement cycle under analysis. And they're saying, you know, the maximum is 20 KSI of 138 megapascals. And then they go on to SH, the basic allowable stress at the maximum metal temperature during the displacement stresses is 138. So there's a couple conditions there. And then an under SL, which is the long, the, 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 the stress due to sustained loads where the supports may be active in some conditions and active in others. And the maximum value of the sustained stress considered in all the supporting conditions shall be used. So basically, you know, they substituted in to that, to, to the 1A. So let's get a little bit more detail into the, to these relationships. So F in that equation is called the stress range factor. It's very similar to what you see in B31.1. And, and so we, this, there's a relationship at FM, which is shown over here. And there's some notes that are buried in there for, for consideration. So, so FM is 1.2 maximum for ferrous metals. If your, your stress, right, is less than, you know, uh, 517 megapascals or 75 KSI, and it's equal to or less than than 700 Fahrenheit. Otherwise, you're supposed to use you know 1.0 over here. They, they had some other notes about you know applicable. This is applicable to non-corroded pipe, and so the procedure you need to follow non-corroded pipe. And there another note here says 0.15 minimum that you need to use uh, for you know infinite number of cycles. Uh, this is F, but this is F for this one, okay? And then um, another note five is the elevated temperatures can reduce cycle life. So if you've got, you know, very high temperatures, you have to consider that end of effect. So it's a little bit of a warning for you to consider. Called 30235. Was, yeah, and it's called the uh, stress factoring since they've graphically represented this. And they said, you know, use for for FM for 0.12, which is shown over there, for ferrous materials where, where those conditions, which you talked about other, other, you know, these things. Otherwise, you're supposed to use one. And you can see that, you know, if you have 
a very, very low range. And remember that you talked a little bit earlier in the previous slide about a minimum of, of 1.15. Well, that corresponds to this part of the curve here for infinite number of cycles, if that's what you want to achieve. So that's just like, you know, the fatigue curve that we talked about in the, the introduction slides to, you know, fatigue and cracking. So this is what they're doing to, to sort of go by route for, you know, how to avoid um, you know, fatigue related issues. Three, five limits of sustained displacement stresses, allowable displacement stress ranges. And, and so, um, this is for the complex stresses. So we, in the, uh, the previous, uh, the first presentation, we talked about complex curves. So, you know, we have the number of cycles and this is basically how to put together different, you know, um, cyclic conditions so that, you know, you could have, for example, like a curve, curve like, let me see here, I'll grab this pen, like this is one curve that would be, you know, one, and then you have another one like this and that's two, and then we could have another one like this and that could be three. So this is the procedure for how to put those together. And this is very similar to, you know, the other ASME standard that we looked at earlier. So let's keep trucking through 30235 limits of sustained displacement stresses. So we got D, allowable displacement stress ranges. So if we have N is greater than 100,000 cycles, then we can apply a Pentix W with owner approval. So they give some, um, you know, an option to, to do other things. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. Mm -hmm.